Today we're speaking with Professor Martin Cave, the Director for the Centre for Management Under Regulation at the Warwick Business School in the UK. As well as his academic work, Professor Cave has also undertaken studies for regulators in Europe and the UK in areas um, such as electricity, water and airports. Today, Professor Cave, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the NBN in Australia. Professor Cave, you've done a lot of work in Europe and the UK looking at the rollout of national broadband networks. What are some of the trends that are emerging? Well, I think one of the most notice noticeable things is how different it is in different countries. Um, in my opinion, there are, there are two key factors in determining whether a rollout of, of next generation access networks in particular takes place. One is regulatory certainty, so that people who are investing know what the terms are going to be on which their competitors will have access to their facilities. And the second thing is just simply competition. If you look at different European countries, in some where there's competition, there is a substantial rollout. In others where competition is much, is much more limited, um, then not much is happening. And why are you seeing such big differences between countries in the timing and rollout and, roll and type of networks? Well, my own view is that there are two key factors um, determining when people make companies make these enormous investments, you know, literally billions of dollars, billions of euros. Um, one is regulatory certainty, knowing what the deal is going to be, because you can't get a board to agree to a huge investment unless they know what um, what the arrangements are going to be for competitors to have access to it. Perhaps more important, it's the extent of competition. I mentioned the Netherlands, for example, KPN in the Netherlands, the the telco was finding it was losing an awful lot of its uh, customers um, to the cable companies because the cable companies upgraded and um, cable companies are themselves um, if they are upgraded next generation access networks a lot of fiber in them they can provide very very fast broadband you know 50 100 megs KPM was finding it was losing business and so it had to make a competitive response it's the same in France it's the same in Sweden it's the same even in some Eastern European countries like Romania and once you get competition that's the thing that, that uh, really spurs um, investment. And I think if you haven't got competition, um, then uh, there's, there are delays. Um, the UK is another example. Um, in the UK, nothing happened. Uh, BT had no plans. Um, the cable company announced that it was uh, providing high-speed broadband up to 50 megs to most of its customers. That's about half the country by the end of uh, 2009. Then why um, haven't we seen the growth in cable competition in Australia that we have um, seen in comparable countries? Well, um, quite frankly, I think that the, the Australian cable operator Optus um, does not actually represent much of a, uh, as much of an independent challenge to Telstra as it could. I mean, you see that, for example, in the fact that in cable areas, Optus quite frequently relies upon Telstra's assets, its unbundled loops, in order to provide service. There isn't enough investment going in there to upgrade the network. And, and in the absence of that kind of competitive threat, then customers lose out in the end. So I think it's very, be very important, it would be a big win um, for Australian consumers um, if the cable company upgraded, if investment went into it, and it provided a kind of really substantial competitive threat. And so why that, hasn't there been that investment in the, the, the cable competition here in Australia? Well, I think part of the problem is that, um, that a lot of regulation um, in Australia seems to be based upon the fact that there won't be much competition. One of, the, one of the really important lessons from studying regulation is that if the regulator thinks there isn't going to be much competition, then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because it regulates in a way that means competitors don't bother to invest. I suppose in that vein, that's why there's a fear that um, a new NBN in Australia, a national broadband network, would be um, a natural monopoly. Need that be the case? Well, I don't think that uh, next generation uh, networks, uh, the NBN, need be a monopoly. As I've said, if the regulator thinks it's going to be a monopoly, or the government makes it a monopoly, then it becomes a monopoly. Um, I think the better policy is, is to use your existing assets, networks that are already in place, and use those as a basis for competing next generation networks. Uh, and that's the way to benefit end users. So what is the role of, say, wireless and the HFC in that scenario? Well, I would see a, a big role um, for both wireless technologies and for HFC. Obviously, in Australia, HFC only covers part of the territory. Um, a proportion of, of customers, 
them, but that's a, that's a really big springboard for competition. And as far as wireless is concerned, then certainly in the remoter areas, which are more expensive to, to serve using, um, using wire-based or fiber-based technologies, then it would be natural to think that wireless would step into the breach. Wireless technologies are now extremely powerful. Mobile broadband or fixed broadband in Europe, for example, and in other countries is taking off at a great rate and exploiting all those technologies in a kind of neutral way, giving each of them a chance to, to, to provide service to customers, I think is a good way forward. There, there seems to have been a lot of um, focus and discussion in Australia about the need to get the industry structure right in order for um, next generation broadband to be rolled out. I mean, is that the right starting place for the debate? Well, I don't think so, because regulators don't really know what the structure is going to be. Um, there are so many surprises. It depends upon, depends upon the way demand develops. It depends upon which firms come in, who has the best ideas. I think regulators shouldn't focus so much on, on trying to regulate to a given structure. They should simply make the conditions which enable firms to come into the market and compete. In other words, they shouldn't focus on structure. They should focus on ensuring the incentives are there to encourage firms to come in. Then you get a competitive struggle. Then you get a discovery process. Um, and it's that competitive struggle and discovery process that's good for consumers.